President Trump has doubled down on his America First agenda, with the White House announcing a probe on auto imports due to national security concerns. The president is reportedly seeking new tariffs of up to 25 percent. That's according to The Wall Street Journal this morning. After hearing the news, China said it would, quote, defend our legitimate interests. This coming as some lawmakers are voicing concerns over ZTE, with Congress considering legislation that would prevent President Trump from lifting sanctions on the Chinese telecom firm. Joining me right now is the White House Director of Legislative Affairs, Mark Short. Mark, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Maria, thanks for having me. Now, I was hearing yesterday during all of your meetings back to back on this subject that the president was considering between 10 and 25 percent tariffs. Where is he in that range? Is he really all the way up to 25 percent or is he considering 10 percent or what? Well, Maria, we were encouraged uh, earlier this week when China lowered its tariffs from 25 to 15 percent. But the president is going to continue to advocate to make sure there's a level playing field. We'd prefer there be no tariffs on, on imports and no tariffs to, on, the, on what we're trying to send to Asia. But that's not the reality of where we face right now. So the president's going to look to fight for American manufacturers and make sure that it's level on both sides. And, yeah. And so we're going to keep pushing forward in that direction. But, Mark, you have to explain to us national security issues here. The president wants to use national security laws to consider imposing these new tariffs. Where is the national security, national security concerns on the auto sector? Yeah, Maria, it's a fair question, but I think at this point, what all we're initiating is the process with the Department of Commerce is going to investigate and look into that, and they'll come back with a report as to whether or not uh, those national security concerns merit uh, adding tariffs uh, for imports into the United States. Uh, but in terms of the national security, I mean, are you talking about the technology within the well, car? I, I, I'm just trying to no, understand no, I, better I, where the national security issue is. I think as we continue to face uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in trade deficits and continue to face a, a, a and many people in the national security realm have talked about one of the biggest crises we face is, is the $21 trillion in debt that the president wants to look at this and say, are there additional financial concerns that we need to look at? We, you know, we have been talk, talking a lot about the issues that really impact American business, and they include, you know, the, the, the theft of intellectual property, the forced transfer of technology. What is the president doing about that with regard to China? Well, we're continuing to uh, to make sure the president is uh, is going to make sure that China is is respecting intellectual property. I think that there's been a lot of coverage on ZT. I think there's a lot still to come on that, Maria. You can rest assured that the administration is going to make sure that uh, that we are very strong in making sure we're protecting intellectual property in this country. And there's two there's two pathways on that particular issue. One is a commerce issue, and one is a Department of Justice issue. And so there is continued looking at civil penalties on ZT, but separately there's a criminal investigation ongoing. So I think some people have jumped out ahead on, on what they're expecting there. The administration is going to continue to hold China uh, accountable for intellectual theft and uh, and make sure that they're uh, paying the penalties. Yeah, uh, the, the president has been very tough on this. Uh, when do you expect some kind of a a solution here. I mean, what's the timetable in terms of understanding exactly where we stand on these tariffs? I think probably in the next week you'll be seeing more information on ZTE regarding the tariffs. I think that's a longer process that'll just be beginning with the Department of Commerce. All right, Mark, let me switch gears ask you about the rollback of Dodd-Frank. Obviously, the uh, president is going to be signing that. I spoke with House Financial Services Committee Chairman and Texas Congressman Jeb Henserling yesterday about what this change would mean. Listen to this. There's going to be a whole lot more banks uh, that will be able to make credit more available uh, and less expensive because they are no longer suffering under the weight, load, complexity, and cost uh, of the Dodd-Frank onslaught. So uh, it, it's principally based uh, to help a lot of regional banks and community banks and credit unions. The president said he was going to do this, and now he is. What's the impact, Mark? Maria, we're really excited about this legislation. The reality is that Americans need more access to capital. The economy is booming, as you were saying a minute ago, down to 3.9 percent, the lowest in 18 years, lowest unemployment ever for Hispanic Americans, lowest ever for African Americans. Unemployment claims the lowest they've been in 44 years, 2.6 million people off of food stamps. America's back at work, and we need more access to capital. As you've covered on your network many times, with Dodd-Frank in 2010, since this was put in place, 1,700 small lenders have gone out of business. 30% of small community banks have gone out of business because of the onerous regulations. This begins to provide relief to them. We look forward to doing even more with Chairman Henserling's leadership to provide more relief beyond the small banks. But this is a big first step, and I think it's going to be most beneficial, again, to the community banks and some of those in the smaller, more rural states. President Trump traveled to Long Island yesterday, blasted those violent MS-13 gang members allegedly responsible for dozens of murders in the community over the last two years. 
During that roundtable event, Mark, the president also called out House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi for defending the international crime game. gang. Let's listen. Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, as an example, are trying to defend MS-13 gang members. I called them animals the other day, and I was met with rebuke. They said, they're people. They're not people. These are animals. And we have to be very, very tough. Tell us about the push for better border security, Mark, even in the face of so many Democrats on the left just blasting the president for calling them animal, animals. I don't get this at all. Well, Maria, the president's 100 percent right here, and the American people know it. Uh, the gangs uh, need to be removed. We need tougher laws that, that, that enable us to enforce the border. And the reality is that, the, that what we've been trying to push is to close, as, as Secretary Nielsen says, some of these loopholes that allow these cash release and don't even allow us to export people who we know are part of these gangs. The reality is that we need tougher enforcement, and the president can continue to push Democrats to provide that for us. Right. I'd say in addition, yeah. you know, one of, the, one of the bigger ironies in this debate, when it not only was it Nancy Pelosi, but uh, Planned Parenthood that, uh, that looks to extinguish life at its most innocent stages at the beginning, put out tweets condemning the president for calling them animals also. I think that that's an irony just showing how far the left has really gone in this debate. It's true. It's pretty extraordinary, Mark. Mark, it's good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Maria, thanks for having me. Mark Short is at the White House this morning.